slow start uh people obviously uh, do come a little late as well so i'll make sure i'm doing that uh, move that to the side and start working what i will show you is some of the stuff that uh, we'll be looking at today so that's my chaotic mess that i will zoom in on i'm going to show you multiple different devices i've got loads of stuff all over the place really uh, do feel free to butt in any point if you've got any questions um, and about anything specific i will come down and zoom this down a little bit now so i can do specific things and that's zoomed in okay and i'll just make sure there's i've got access to the focus there we go excellent there we go not too bad right i will talk through lots of the different devices so clearly we are using this is going to be my out of the box uh, version today in fact i will use a different camera setup here uh, desk and cam no not that one yeah, that one. I'm just playing around with stuff. Ignore me. Just trying to play something out. Um, so obviously we've got this uh, Arduino Nano. There's lots of different versions of this uh, device, actually. Um, I've got uh, many of them because uh, I play around with them. This is the crazy one that I may get to at some point. Uh, because this one actually allows you to do machine learning and uh, vision recognition. So I've been playing around with this version uh, a lot recently. But there's lots of different microcontrollers. And the only reason why we're going to use this one is specifically is because I wanted to show you C++ today. Um, we've got other small, cheap microcontrollers uh, like the Raspberry Pi Pico here. This is not the W. Um, got a W somewhere around, but the W's just got a wireless chip that goes there. This is about six or seven quid. Uh, this one's about 22 to 26, depending on where you get it from. Um, but there's lots of advantages to this little microcontroller. It's part of the um, Arduino Uno range. This is a knockoff Arduino Uno. I've got uh, an Arduino Uno over there that we're going to have a look at. But there's different tools for different jobs. Once you learn this you can start using ESP8266s or ESP32s, which are very cheap, low power devices, if you ever want to do that. And you can rack your way up with Python and stuff like that all the way up to the Raspberry Pis. Uh, I've got a little stack under my desk, which I, well, in fact, why not? Let's see if I'll pull this out, probably do something there. Uh, underneath my very messy area, there's my stack of pies. Each one of them does a different job, as well as an Arduino Uno there as well, doing some temperature sensors, uh, oh, sorry, humidity sensing at the moment. I'm trying to work out something that's wrong with my loft, and we think we found out what it is through a little bit of data and coding. I'm sure there was easier ways, but there we go. That's just the geek way forward. Um, so it's a really powerful device, but it's a bit overkill for a lot of jobs. And one of the things that I think is very, <coughs> pardon me, sorry, underrated is LoRaWAN. So you can get this microcontroller that you can also program through the Arduino IDE. Um, and this allows you to send signals using LoRaWAN, which is much, much longer range than Wi-Fi. It can go up to 25 plus kilometers, uh, but it's very low packets. So it can only send like numbers, the odd temperature sensor or something like that. Um, it can't send images or video or anything like that. So there's pros and cons to each of the devices and which ones you might want to use. So this is the one that we're going to be looking at today. And I'm going to take you through how to kind of set this up as it were. So if I switch to dash cam and desk here, I'm going to have a little look at this device uh, or this computer screen, if I can rack it up here. There we go. So one of the places that you probably want to go to that I hinted in the email is the Arduino Cloud uh, IDE. Now, what you can do, we've got uh, programs here, and I'm just going to drag mine across. It's just loading up at the moment. You can download this program and connect your device to uh, that screen or to that IDE and you can upload your files directly using a USB micro cable or otherwise. But it has, it's the way in which people did things, really, I would say, up until the last few years. Uh, it's just taking ages to version. I, I can't see why you would, but if you did, sometimes it's worth just double checking with the um, 
main program so it's good to have this as a backup just to see if there's a connection problem or whether it's an internet problem or something uh, like that and I've tried to stall for long enough but I'll, I'll drag it in in a minute so when you've downloaded it will load up the Arduino IDE but by going to the cloud version and sometimes I always forget where it is so if you just type in Arduino cloud if ever you're struggling or the whole that was my last search because I was trying to do a deep sleep for the ESP uh, the Arduino cloud and then you can just go to it directly from here and I personally signed in with my Google account and it's already got me signed in now what you can see here on the side is the number of devices that I have and the things I'm going to talk about the differences so when you come in you won't see anything because you've got no things or you've got no devices so there's no real right or wrong way of doing this next one I've got several devices here and I'll just have a look at the uh, screen oh, uh, the screen itself on its own uh, do, do, do. here we go screen and cam there so I've got all these devices that are ready to go and what you can do is you can press plus new device and uh, create a board here it will automatically create you like a blank file now I can show you the pros and cons of that it's not really a, a massive deal or you can go to oh there we go there we go you go to things and you can make a file first and attach your file to the thing uh, to the device so it, it doesn't matter which way around you do it personally I like to create a thing first because it's a program and then I attach my device to that thing so I've got a program here called blink and I might this program we're gonna make in a moment I might want to create that file and then connect to my device but I want to show you why I don't do it this way around um, so I'm going to do it the way I don't normally do it just to show you why it's a really small tiny little thing and it's not really a big deal but it's just the reason why uh, I do it the way I'm going to do it here so I will go back to the screen and the cam here so the thing that I said was very important is grabbing a in fact I won't grab that one I will grab which one is longer I can't get my cable here so I've got a couple of uh, USB uh, micro cables here. I'm just trying to struggle and pull this one. There we go. So clear a bit of space out here, ready for everything else. And here is my micro USB. And you can take it out of here now and you can plug it straight in. And this is a one-time solution. After this, you can use whatever connection you want uh, just to power it up because I add my um, programs over the air so it's started up and it's connected so all I do now is go to my device and you can do this with me or watch this back later because it's going to be a bit where it takes a little while here and as this loads up it's going to ask me what do I want and there are two versions or two questions that you can have here an Arduino device itself that uh, we have now and an Arduino Uno or anything with the Arduino logo or a third party device and that might be something like the ESP32 so there's lots of different devices that can use C++ um, to use this uh, programming environment so I'm going to go to Arduino because we have a, an official device and then it's going to look for any connected devices here and if you do not see what you're about to see next which is this one I've got two I've got um, this device plugged in as well which is the maker Wi-Fi uh, 1010 and I've got my Arduino no no if you don't see the bottom one then this cable is data is not data only it is uh, just a power cable there's only one true way of working out if your micro USB is power only and that's cutting the cable and looking to see if there's only two wires positive and a negative and obviously that is pointless because you've just wrecked your cable so the other way is by plugging it in and if you don't see this 
then you've not connected it properly. If you're on a Windows device, you probably won't see dev uh, slash cu.usb modem. You'll probably see something like com3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or a number with com. It's just the um, port that your device is connected to. And in Macs, it's slightly different to Windows. But as long as you see it, that's what you want. And you can click on it. This bit will take a little while. So this is checking the firmware that comes with this device and it's upgrading it to work on the system that you have. Now it can say it can take up to five minutes. It doesn't always take that long. It probably takes about a minute or so. Um, and then you'll have to disconnect and reconnect this cable. It'll just be following the instructions. So you can plug that in and do that. Um, like I said, once we've done this once and it's connected to your Wi-Fi, then you can drop the programs on as long as it's got power. So while it's doing that, one of the things that I did give everybody, which is going to be optional, but I'm kind of highly encouraging you to do so, is the USB-C uh, board that we have here is USB-C, which is better than uh, micro USB because you probably have loads of USB-C stuff. This board also limits the current. So if you're using uh, different power cables or different, it will stop it from overloading the board, which is really nice. Now that does, that already does this with the micro USB, but this means you can use uh, lots of different ways to charge your device without risking it. And one of the things that I do is I take vape uh, lithium batteries. So single use vapes are absolute scourge of humanity because the amount of lithium batteries that are just being dumped that could be reused is a travesty at the moment. So uh, it's one of those things you can buy lithium batteries. The problem with buying lithium batteries, uh, this one's a better one uh, from Pimroni. I'll show you some websites afterwards because it's in a case, which is much nicer. When you see things like this, they need to be protected because they can start to puff up. And if you've got any kind of give in a in a lithium battery, you need to dispose of it properly because it's coming to the end of life uh, and it's not good. That's when the things blow up. So the lithium batteries, you can just use a pair of pliers to pull off. I'll do a separate session on this, but you can just pull off the end of a single use vape if you know people that uh, use them and you can and this is where you would need to purchase your own kind of uh, soldering iron. You can pick them up dead cheap and I think electronics is great fun, but you can uh, take it or leave it as far as I'm concerned. And I would then, with a soldering iron, just get rid of these two uh, solder points here and you end up with, unplug it here just as I come to it, you will end up with the other cable that I gave you, which were these connections and I can see here as I've got my uh, battery I've just soldered them to each other soldered that to the right place on the board again I'll do a separate session on how you can do this there's loads of stuff online about it and then this can go directly powering my board uh, that's over on the other side so I use a lot of these for my little IOT projects and you can plug in the USB-C and kept it charged or you can use while it's plugged in it can be charging this and it can be useful to do up to a day I think you can get away with with um, the Arduino Nano that we have uh, but um, it's not a great low power device so I can go back more into the power so I've stalled enough and you can see now on the screen that we have a before you continue and effectively what it's saying now is you've got to unplug, replug, and press continue. So it's grayed out for the moment. I'm going to unplug, replug, and then the continue will become available. Oh, so I come to it there and just press continue. And then I can give it a name. And the keen eyed among you will know that I name all of my Arduinos after famous um, robots. And today's robot will be Robbie. And if you don't know, it's a travesty. So Robbie the robot. And it's uploading a sketch already. So this is why I said I don't usually do it this way round, because it's adding a blank sketch that I'm then going to program. Quite often I will already have programmed my sketch 
and I'll attach it to the device. It doesn't really matter because you can copy and paste, uh, but I'll show you just the slight kind of OCD annoyance uh, in the way that it does this uh, way around. So it's uploading that sketch now uh, to this uh, device, no problem, and tick, 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 and it'll be ready to go. So let's have a quick look at what that looks like. And I'm gonna go back to my uh, screen and cam here. So when you've done that, the reason and the difference is a couple fold here. So that IDE, whereas we're about to see a lot more with this device here. So when we look at it, and I'll bring it all into the screen here and just minimize that a little bit. There we go, just get the sizing right. Here we go. So let's have a little look at what this screen is telling us. Uh, it's telling us when you added it, blah, 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 blah. It's telling us device history, lots of useful things. And it's now telling us that we've got nothing associated with uh, this thing. So I could stop now and I could go and I could assign stuff, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go what happens with a, a blank file just to show you what it looks like like this. So when I click create thing, it's going to what we call a sketch. That's what uh, C++ and Arduino call their files. They're like we were dealing with Python files and VS Code. In the Arduino world, we will call them sketches, as you can see here in the top. And that one is just some alerts that it will talk you through. It will also enable you now to configure your network. And once we've done this and added our file for the first time, you will no longer need that cable anymore. You'll just need power to it. And there's different ways in which you can do that. So we can go to configure. It will not allow you to upload the sketch without a network configured. Um, it will just tell you that the network hasn't been done. So we might as well do it now. And you click it and you just type in your Wi-Fi name and your password and just press save. So that is now going to be connected to my Wi-Fi. And we could change now the sketch if we want or detach the sketch. This is why I love this device because you can use one device and depending on what you want to do with it, you can just attach and reattach other things across the internet. That's the gold here. So even if you've got one device that's in your house, you can have it do multiple different things from a web browser just by attaching and reattaching different things or different sketches to that. Now, the other thing that we have here is a cloud variable, and this is the gold. This is the thing that the classic IDE doesn't have, and uh, the device that isn't the nano uh, IoT device that you now have. So this device is uh, kind of semi-unique. There are lots of other things that can have cloud variables, but this is the easiest and the cheapest. And this just means we are going to make a variable that can be accessed through Alexa or Google Home and we're going to talk to this device in a minute and we're going to enable us to switch things on or off remotely anywhere in our house or anywhere actually in the world. Uh, that's the real key uh, moment of this. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to have to be careful actually because I've already called one. I'll call this Blink because we're about to do the first, uh, rather than Hello World that we do with Python, uh, we do Blink for robotic devices just to make a light flash. And when we do Blink, uh, I'll just call this blink test because I'm going to delete this one afterwards. The next thing is the variable type. Now, I'm going to go straight to Alexa compatible for now, but you can have lots of different other types like character, just a text, floating or integer. A floating, so in C++, it's really, do you want a decimal? And if you want a decimal, then it's floating. Or is it just a whole number? and so there would be integer. Now there are other things you can have a look uh, at the different uh, items that you can have, but really you're more often not going with basic type or Alexa compatible. And there's lots of different things here, but mostly it's just true or false. And the only reason why you might want to choose light over motion sensor is just for when you're searching on the Alexa app. So when I'm, you'll see me now go through on my phone in a second. And when I look for the device on my home network, it says, what type of device is it? And it's just important that you 
tell it which one it will be looking for or you remember that. You can go back to the code and see it. So I'm going to say light because I'm going to do an LED here. And this is going to uh, declare the variable. Now, if I'd have declared it as a basic type, like a, a float here, floating point number, it would have declared it as a float. Okay, so when we were dealing with Python, it was either integers, floats, or strings, and I'm just going to get rid of that. So if I did integer, it would just be int blink test. So what this is doing is saying that this is it is just a Boolean uh, value, which is true or false, but this is telling Arduino to do something slightly clever with it, to allow other programs like Alexa to search for this. If you just did float or int, it would just do float and int. It wouldn't be accessible via the internet. And we want to read and write. Everything else is usually exactly the same. We do add the variable. And we'll see why that was important to do now and what we can possibly do later. So when I go to my sketch, and I'm going to have a look at here, this now has a lot more in it than this sketch did from the IDE. First off, it's got a large comment. So the first thing we're learning about C++ is commenting is different. It's not hash anymore it is forward slash forward slash or because you can see here these are comments here which is just forward slash forward slash so the same as the hashtag but if you want to do a considerable amount of text as this has here then you do forward slash star and then star forward slash so there's two ways of commenting effectively um, again like I said just stop me if you need me to explain anything going through with all these uh, I've got multiple screens up so I won't be able to he looked at the Arduino one here it had void setup and the first thing here before void setup is this include here now the hashtag we might be uh, confused in thinking that this is a type of comment it isn't this is how we import libraries so in Python it's the same concept of this is a library which is a H file here, and this is how we include libraries. That's it. It's just a different way of including libraries or uh, importing libraries. So really, we're not going to go too deep into C++ other than realizing that it's pretty much the same as Python. It's just syntax differences. Um, it's able to handle a lot more complicated uh, things, C++, but effectively the structure is very very similar there's a few nuances that we're going to talk about which give it or the ability to handle bigger and more complex files and it's this structure that we're about to see next so what we do before void setup is we will either import our libraries or we will declare variables that's what we do at the beginning of C++ before we get into setting up the program. So there's really kind of three main areas. We can also add functions outside of uh, these uh, setups and these loops. I'll just explain what they are in a second. So the main areas are these import variables and declare. Sorry, the import uh, libraries and declare variables. Then we run this void setup once. So there's lots of initializations we can do that aren't variables. And we've got looping, which is what happens over and over again. You might not want to run a loop. You might just want to run something once, and therefore you'd put it in void setup. Or you can run loops, and you can run multiple versions of these loops. And we can then outside of all of this, or even beforehand here if you wanted to, uh, do your functions. But quite often people do them at the end, but there is absolutely nothing stopping you with adding some functions in as well here. So there are different sections to C++. So right now we had some commenting, and what this commenting has told us is quite important. Normally we have to declare all our variables at the very beginning. Otherwise it says, I don't know what you're talking about. The only thing in the cloud version of Arduino, which is different to this uh, kind, of, kind of old school version, is that setup that we did 
for cloud variables, they're the only ones you don't have to declare. It's telling you it's done it for you and it's done it in this library. So it's just reminding you here that you no longer now need to declare blink test as a variable. It's done it for you. Every other variable has to be uh, declared that we're going to go through today. So, like I said, it, it's going to take us time. I'm not, I don't expect us to be expert at C++ straight away with everything that we go through. Uh, this is just more of an example to show you the similarities that we go through through this. Then we've imported our library. There are some setups that uh, it's already done for us. OK, so what it's done first is it says it's opened a port because this is uh, an Internet uh, kind of um, uh, updatable program it's telling the port to listen via the cloud or wherever it is it's just saying that it needs to listen to this port that's all it's saying the next thing it's saying is that give that a second so we've got milliseconds same as python uh 1500 uh, milliseconds so we've got uh, 1.5 seconds to uh, just wait, just give it a bit of time because all computers need a little bit of time to do something, otherwise it won't initialize. Then it's going to initialize anything that's inside this library. So this is all automatic, this happens each time. And then it's going to connect to any cloud services. So all this is being done, which is why this is way more powerful than the original one going forward. Then we have the following functions, uh, again, which is all just to do with um, how it connects to the Internet. And then the extra thing that the this has over the old one is it's got this other void, this other kind of program, which is listening for any changes that you might do to Alexa to this cloud variable only. So this these will only apply to any cloud variables that you have. Now, you don't have to have any cloud variables at all you can just use this and program it as you want but I want to connect things over the internet so all this has been done automatically for us and the only reason I do not to do this straight away um, or I do my things first is this one little line at the top and it we can change it from untitled to blink test uh, but I have to manually and I told you it was a small, really ridiculous reason why I, I don't do this. They annoy me so much. But um, let's do a thing first. But there's absolutely no reason. And I think when you first start out, it's probably best to just add a device and let it guide you through the process there. Let's make our device do something. So if you're playing along at home, as they say, let's see if we can get this to do something quite simple, quite quickly. So... The example program that I'm going to take us through is, like I said, something called Blink. And when I said we need to declare variables, I'm going to take us through some different reasons why I'm going to declare something in a moment. But first of all, when I'm setting up for the first time, I need to make sure that the pins on my Arduino and one of the pro things you're probably going to want to do is type in Arduino Nano 33 IoT so, uh, pin layout or just pins and save one of these programs. Just find any round you like. I just go with whatever I find quickly and you can visit the website or you can click on the image and you can grab that out so so each of these pins uh, d means digital uh, ground very important to do your negative and it's very important you look at these values here so we can have a five volt out this is going to be important later on and we can have a three volt out as well so different voltages depending on which devices that you might be using we can power the Arduino directly which we would do using the method that I've done with the lithium batteries um, and we've got other different pins that we can come to at different times so what we need to first do is none of these pins are actually activated so when we're doing the setup in the void we must and it doesn't really matter where you do it I usually do it before the delay just so it sets everything else up because these things don't need any time delays uh, affected to them they're just kind of telling the 
device what's active and what isn't and this is called pin mode and the capital is important for the M there and what we could do is I'll do well no I'll do one at a time actually the first thing that we want to do the easiest is using the inbuilt LED so on the pin that you have here that there is a little blinky light here uh, if you've got yours on at the moment it's uh, I think I actually set this up so I could do uh, desktop and yeah there we go desk and cam at the moment that should be good just double check that's what I'm showing yeah brilliant so at the moment let's bring that to the side we've got the green light on here which is the power indicator but this LED here actually has a variable called LED underscore built in so what I can do is I can activate uh, that pin so what we're saying is which pin is it that I want to activate and this is the longest pin name out of all of them because otherwise if it was pin 2 we just write 2 but this is LED underscore all in capitals built in and we want to make that an output so effectively what we're doing here is saying that this pin is going to be giving out information not taking information in which is one of the other things that can happen here so we can have inputs we can have outputs we can have analog we can have lots of different stuff that we'll talk about at a later stage then the next most important thing to do with c++ which i always forget and every time i verify my code it'll tell me and put a big exclamation mark on this line i forget my bloody semicolons okay so every line unlike python where we can just press enter we can actually write uh, C++ in one long line if we want to we don't need any enters but it would be ridiculous but this is telling us that there's a new line or a new command without that you would get uh, an error in the verification it will just highlight it and say expecting a semicolon and that's going to really annoy you when you first start doing this because you're going to keep doing it and you're going to always forget so that's it that's all we're doing we're initializing that and then we're going to write some code so once it's initialized the pin we're going to come to the loop to do over and over and over. And what we say here is digital write, which just means you're going to tell uh, digitally the pin uh, a one or a zero, a Boolean value. Uh, we can do uh, analog data um, in bits and stuff like that for other devices like the uh, distance sensor and stuff like that. But if we just want to switch something on or off, then we have digital write which pin is it you're doing led underscore built in brackets high also a comma high which just means on okay don't forget your semicolon then do delay for you know it's not the same as sleep uh, so again a different slightly different terminology depending on what you're writing in c++ we have delay so i'm going to switch it on I'm going to wait a second, don't forget your semicolon, press enter, and because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste in here, and except instead of high, after I wait, it's gonna to go to low. So this is blink, it's gonna go on, it's gonna go off, it's gonna, and it's gonna loop that over and over and over again. I've got my semicolons in there, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna annoy myself and say, do you know what, what happens if I miss one out? Um, because we've already got it plugged in, it's going to say it's going to do this for the first time over USB and I press write verify and upload and it's going to come up with an error because it's going to tell me that I didn't do um, the semicolon. So you can see why it annoys you because this verification process takes a little while um, and this is the difference between um, a compiler it, it will it only it does everything all at the same time rather than line by line so it's a bit annoying it will package everything then test it and then work out that it's annoying there you go error but it did tell me that this was the error so it does go one back in other words you know i'm looking at the code in here um can't quite see that it's just behind there we go i can try and read all this stuff behind it. i won't bother with you it basically just says expecting um, a semicolon so i needed it there when i didn't have it 
So I'm going to verify and upload, and I should be able to unplug and plug my uh, Arduino now after this into any power source, the plug or anything. It doesn't have to be uh, connected to my computer. It doesn't have to be a data US micro USB, and it will say uh, over the air. Okay, so it's verifying my code. It's going to do that, and we should see once that's done that this light here starts to blink. So upload started. There you go, restarting, and it blink. It flashes for a little bit just to say that the program's uploading, but then it will flash on and on, on and off, uh, one second at a time. There you go. So let's see if it's done. It's still waiting to do it. So it takes a little while. It's going to take even longer when I do it over the air. Um, but over the air is really powerful. Okay, so it's done that. And if we look there, he says confidently as we go for that. There you go. One, off, on, off. So it takes a little while to activate, is it? Because we did do that delay, remember, for one and a half seconds while everything was initializing. And we've got our on and off. Okay. Now I could have saved myself a little bit of time here. So how could I have saved myself time? I'm lazy. So I don't want to write long things like built-in LED, for example. And also, I don't want to do things that um, probably like waste my time in, in many respects. So right up here, I can actually declare variables that save me some time or help me to understand what I'm doing. So one of the things that I'm going to do now, and again, you can do this at home, you have some DuPont cables, which are these cables. Uh, this is just so we don't have to do any soldering. And you don't have to separate them out if you don't want to, uh, but we're going to use two of them. And we're going to plug them in to the ground uh, here, on this, this side, and D2. So what that's going to look like when I turn it over is what I like about the Arduino, and I'm going to probably just bring this down a little bit, zoom in a little bit more. Oh, let's bring that here, there we go. I'm going to do the, um, I've got a little program to zoom manually, because otherwise it's a pain in the backside when it does the auto zoom. There we go. So it's got these little white areas here and here, which depict the ground, which is very, very important. So when I flip it over, it's going to be on the opposite side, but you can also read inside here. It actually has the pin numbers themselves. So I'm just going to go and do that. I'm going to plug in to ground and D2, which is side by side. And if you're counting your pins, it's the fourth and the fifth pin on this side. So I've got my ground, which is the white one there, and I plug into D2. Now, the next important thing is why I gave you a green and a blue LED. LEDs are not all equal. And I should be using resistors, right? Um, you can buy packs. I'll show you at the end. You can buy packs to do uh, different resistors. But you can blow uh, resistors. And blow just means they never switch on again. They just light they go on and then they never come back off again. Um, sorry, never go back on again. So there's not an explosion or anything like that. Red, yellow LEDs will quite often, and white as well, will quite often need a slightly lower uh, voltage than the one that we have. So we usually need a resistor in between them. So we're doing this dirty. So I've just said sod it. These uh, red and green LEDs work with three uh, volts. Now, the vo very important thing here is the length of those pins. One is the anode and one is the cathode. And basically, one is positive and one is negative. And it very much matters which is which. So the only way I can remember, and the only way I do remember is a silly way, but you have to come up with your own silly way, is if you were to write negative and positive, which one is would need the most amount of ink the positive so it's the longest <laughs> it's a terrible way of remembering but the positive is the longer of the two um, that you have sometimes they have kinks in them um, but it's the longest pin and when I was looking at these ones here the green is d1 
oh, sorry, D2, uh, we did there, sorry, uh, pin two. And that's what we're going to make positive. The ground is negative. So the so make sure whichever colors you're using match up. So the shorter cable goes into the negative and the longer pin, and you do have to be a little bit uh, pushy with them. Don't just pull them in until they stop. There's a little bit of resistance. You need to push them in a little bit and they do go in. Okay, so there is a bit of resistance, otherwise they'll fall out if you've done it right and we got the one in the negative there. So that's that. Okay, this one's still flashing away and I've got a uh, light in there. So the next thing here is to go through our code again and say, well, actually, what's changed here? So I could just go straight in here underneath the uh, pin mode and do another pin mode and do two for pin two and then do that as output okay not forgetting my semicolon there but I will get confused the more stuff that I add to all these pins the more confusing this code becomes now right now I could just do this and it wouldn't be a problem. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to do, I'm going to declare an integer. And what I'm going to say is this integer or this, this number that I have is going to be called LED blue like that. And I'm using camel case here. So I'm using uh, capitals to separate. Some people prefer to do lowercase, uh, sorry, underscore and uh, lowercase. I don't really care. I'm, I'm not bothered. Um, I just, I just quite like camel case, if I'm being honest. So whatever variable name you call that, which is going to be more obvious, then I can then do equals two. So this means that instead of saying pin two, which I could still do if I wanted to, like that, or I could do that, which makes it easier to remember what variable is which without having to constantly check your uh, numbers or make a list or something like that. Um, so you can redefine. Now, there are things like you, there are people online that will say, well, you can actually do that in a way that's called, oh, pardon me, there we go, which means define. You can do that. That will actually do a similar job, but it's becoming um, a little bit more temperamental that. So the newer kind of methodology is by saying uh, int. Um, now, there's also another thing. This is why C++ is more complicated and difficult. There are lots of different, like Python, you can do things in different ways. There's actually different notation, which is more irritating for uh, C++. So this value is fine, but it can be changed. Now you might want to change this, but I can't see why, because we're always, all we're doing is just doing a shorthand so I remember what's happening. This takes up more information than doing this, which is called const. And that makes a constant integer, something that cannot be changed. It is read only, not read and write. Now I know I might lose some people here, but basically you may see these three different methods of doing exactly the same as I've just done here online. Each of them has their pros and cons about why you would do this. Each of them has the pros and cons. I've forgotten my um, variables after this each time there. The only one, sorry, that you don't need to do, <laughs> it makes more complicated, is the include the hashes there and the define. So that's why there, there are lots of different reasons why define is used, but it's becoming very passe. It's just if you look for code online or if you use AI to generate it, don't be confused if you see either. Now, of the two of these, const int is best because it takes up less space, but for the interest of keeping things as simple as possible, let's just do integer because it makes sense. So all three will work, but there are different reasons as we get more complicated with them about why you might choose each. You can see why C++ is annoying. So all the reason I did that for was to, oh, I didn't change it to three there, was to pin two. And that was just so my code becomes, I want to say less confusing, but it's easier to read. 
Okay, that's all it is. And when I come now down, uh, in fact, what I might, no, I'll do that afterwards. And what I'm now going to do is come down to my code and I'm going to change this one to, I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to stick it afterwards. And instead of having digital write, and this is one of the lovely things I like about this online tool, when I highly highlight that section, it shows me everywhere that that is used. So if you're trying to replace something, it will show you everywhere that that exists, which is very, very nice. And I've now called that LED blue. And I've called this LED blue. It will have worked just as well if we'd have used the number two in here. But as the stuff gets more complicated, it makes more sense to define it. Just so I know that I've done things right, I'm gonna actually um, rename that. Now this is gonna happen one after one another, okay? If I wanted to happen at the same time, I might wanna drag this in here and stick it on this line here or do different things. I could make functions, there's lots of different stuff. Let's just get started. I'm gonna press this, see now when I verify this, if this now works, you'll see it starting to flash when it's uploading the file. So at the moment it's blinking. Oh, there we go, what semicolon did I forget? Uh, pin mode, LED, oh, look at that, mode, silly me. So you'll see the, uh, it, it's nice because it goes and tells you which line the the stuff's on, which is fine. And then it will start to do what it needs to do. And like I said, the process takes a while. And you can see now, oh, what have I done here again? Let's have a look, pin mode. Uh, you can press the exclamation. It was not declared in this scope. Void setup, uh, LED blue. Yeah, I did that, pin mode. Da, 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 da. Let's see, what did I not do here? L int. LED blue equals two, that's fine. Uh, int LED blue comma output. What is wrong here? Love doing live things. It was not declared in the scope. It was declared in the scope because it's in void setup. It's there, I've got my semicolon. I've got that one. Let me just double check that. Pin code, LED blue equals two. If I got a sp ah, look at that. Small little bloody capital letters, look, capital L. I was gonna say, I was looking at that, thinking, what is it? So again, just like Python, capitals can be very annoying. Uh, so there we have, that was that one. Sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees when you're doing those kind of things and that should be fine. So this is now doing it over the air, you can see now. So this power can be anywhere. I can plug this into any kind of plug socket that you might have, stick it downstairs, and I've got loads of these over the house doing different jobs, um, and I can now send the code and update them for wherever, wherever I am, or swap the operation round when it happens. So that is starting the upload, so I'll start to see this start to flicker in a minute the other LED before it starts to flash every second. And then hopefully my blue LED will then go for two seconds after that. And then we're gonna connect it to Alexa. And I'm probably gonna leave it for there and show you some other projects. Uh, and we'll do these bit by bit. We'll check in more regularly with this uh, to get the, through this and get you started. But you can Google uh, stuff out of this. I'll show you the different projects that we're gonna be able to do with it. And you know, I'm trying to stall, this is taking, see how much longer it takes over the air than when it's cabled in. Now if I wanted to, I could have done that drop down because it's still plugged into the computer. I could have overridden this and said, still use the, the port, uh, still use the cable. And that would have spe sped up this process a little bit, but I'm, I'm used to doing it like this. And when I'm, when I'm doing stuff myself, it's not too bad. Uh, there we go. So stuff's on, it flashed briefly just as the power hit the device and there we've got the two seconds on that one. We'll come on, so there we go, one, one, and then we've got our one, two, one, two. So it goes on and off, on and off, slightly slower each time than each one. Now I could add more LEDs, I could add a green one into here. And in fact, I might do that uh, rather than um, change it. So what I might do now, just to do my Alexa part here, is I'm gonna grab myself a green LED. And this time, 
I'm going to use, there's a separate ground here. And this is the only annoyance when you use DuPont cables, that you have limited a number of things. So normally, as you can see with uh, other projects that I run, you might want to start investing in things like breadboards so you can do multiple uh, multiple pins and multiple stuff. But just for getting started, I'm going to do the uh, purple on the ground. And I'm going to just knock this on to pin three, which is there. And we should get a lot faster now at doing this. And uh, just let's remember that I was doing the purple for the shorter part. So when I'm looking at my pins, the shorter one was the purple. And my pin three was the longer positive. So again, just a little bit of resistance when you're pushing those in. That looks like I've got it. There we go. So I've got my two pins now. And when I come back to my code, this is much, much faster because I'm literally going to copy and I'm going to paste. And I'm going to change that to three. And instead of blue, I'm going to do green. And you can see now that that's why I want to label or change the numbers. Um, and then again, we can copy this. Being careful this time not to do my... But this time... What I'm going to do now is I am not going to do this as part of this flow. I'm going to stick this into my cloud. So on change. So what I'm now going to do is say uh, different ways of doing this. But what I'm going to say is that um, at, at the one point here, I'm going to have to tell it that I'm going to rechange it from blink. So. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me just have a quick look down here on blink digital right green. There we go. Yeah, that's fine. So what we're saying is because we have this cloud variable called blink test that we made right at the beginning, we don't have to declare it because this code told us that it's already been declared and it's been assigned this odd thing. And what it's saying is on blink change here, what do you want it to do? So when we force it, when we tell Alexa to do something, what's it going to do? So this is different to an automated repeat. This is waiting for some command somewhere on the internet. So what we do now is I'll say something like if, because it needs to know what the state of this green light is. Is it off or is it on? So effectively right now it's off, so it's false because this was a Boolean value, remember, when we went to the setup, we said it's a cloud light. And when we were adding the values and we went to it Alexa compatible, it was a light, which is either true or false, a Boolean value. So I need to do this if statement. It's the first time we've done an if, very similar to Python as well. Uh, uh, again, when you write wrote if there and opened the bracket, it automatically closed one. I kind of wish sometimes it would do the um, uh, semicolons in the same, similar way. But what we're doing this time is we called our variable and again, remind ourselves of blink test with a capital T there. So if blink test, and because I'm looking for an equivalence and not an equals, it's still the same as Python. It's a double equal sign. If it's true, in other words, if it's on, and similarly to Python, we're going to open up some curly brackets here, which have been closed for me. Why have they not? There you go. Just going to scroll down here. Yes, they were closed for me there. Um, and it's indented as well. And it's digital right, same as we had before, LED green, because that's the new one, send it to high. OK, don't forget that semicolon. And after that curly bracket, we could have uh, else ifs and all that kind of stuff, but it's either on or it's off. So else, open the curly bracket, closed it for me, which is nice of it. Thank you very much. Then we have digital right, oh, right. And we have the same thing, LED green. And this time we have that to low. So if it's on, turn it off. If it's not on, oh, turn it off again. Okay, don't forget my bracket. So let's see if I've done that right. Okay, um, nothing should happen where the IoT cloud gets really, really nice. So, oh, have I done that? Digital, I always can't do something right. Digital right, 
LED green low. That's, let's see what it was after. Digital right was not declared in this scope. Always love it. It's just cat. It's just spelling digital. God, I can't spell for toffee, can I today? So let's go and upload that. Always spelling the spelling errors, which is why we love copy and paste and using AI these days. So that's going to happen. While that's happening, I'm going to go and open. I'm going to copy and paste this into a separate window, and we're going to see the third. There's, there's some extra parts here, but the third thing that we're going to finish off tonight with, which is dashboards. So this allows you, and it's really, really intelligent, this, and it's really, really clever, because we're going to see that you can have apps on your phone here as well for free, for no extra charge. And I'm just going to click on this, and we'll so we've used a device, we've used a thing, we're now going to use dashboards. Triggers are automatic processes, but we're going to create now an online button for my phone. So you can download an app, whether you're iPhone or um, Android, and it's called Arduino. Uh, it's just IoT uh, Remote here. There it is. Just download that. Just search for Arduino um, uh, IoT Remote, and you'll get this. And any dashboard that we make now will turn up here in there. So I've got loads of dashboards, as you can see here on the right hand side, all my dashboards are, are there. I'm going to create a new one straight off the bat and you'll see it, you'll see it arrive on this other side of the screen soon, which is really nice. So again, free, you can use an app on your phone. Fantastic stuff. Uh, rename this blink test as I've done for everything else. I've already got a blink, which is similar to this. And then we can edit this and simply add a switch or a push button if you really wanted to, but I like a switch. Loads of different things you can add in and we can play around with. And we link our variable. So just off the screen here to the side, we can link the variable. Very, very nice. You just click on it. It asks you which of your things, and we had blink test here, and we had blink test. That's the variable that is now going to be linked when I click the link variable there. So that is really clever and can't be under, it can't be uh, kind of understated what I've just done here. I have now online created a very simple thing here. I'm now going to come to my app on my phone. I'm going to refresh this now and I've got a blink and blink test here. So if I come into blink test, I have a button. That's just been created for me live. That's fantastic. And then I have a green light here and I can press that on and it takes a little second. He says confidently this is gonna happen. It seems to always take ages the first time that this happens. Also, I just need to check that my uh, button is in, is is in. Sometimes what I do is just check another LED because I've got a load of LEDs and not all of them haven't blown. Sometimes I blow my LEDs and don't don't realize it. So I'm just going to switch in this blue one here for the moment to be ultra confusing. I'm just going to switch that on. Oh, let's see. So, uh, no, it's not. Ah, actually, it's not switched on here. Let me just have a view of that. So did this not connect? Let me see. A blink test. Yeah. Off. Oh, there you go. Did it go on? I think I did I see that or was I looking at the other one that's why I need to use a green uh, LED I will, I'll get another one out of my pack as I'm doing this one-handed oh, dropped it on the floor classic there we go take that out I'll check all my connections because I did this before pushing in bit of resistance pushing in bit of resistance there we go so they're all in let me check that that's in ground yes it is and it's purple yes that's in D three which it is so i think it's not liking it's not liking this being on at the same time as this web app i think that's the issue so let me just close the web app down um or there we go or close that one down let's close the web app the, i think it's just getting two signals it's saying on and off at the same time so now that's gone Let's see if that will work. There we go. That seemed to be better. I've never done that live, so that's uh, something I've learned today. 
and then off. Now this can be now connected to anything, right? So we now have a cloud variable because that's on Alexa, I can now go, and this is what I said uh, before, I can go to my Alexa app. You can enable the skill Arduino. So you go to uh, more, you go to skills and you can add or search for Arduino. You can type in the username and password that you made uh, to do this and log in to the Arduino cloud. So you go there, I've already got this enabled on my device settings, there we go. And then when you come to your devices and you want to add a device, we can then add a device. We can choose light because we said light before and we just go down to other and then uh, it's connected via Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then discover devices, which is just off the screen and it's looking for devices. Okay, now this is going gone fast because I want to wrap it up relatively quickly and go through it all. And it's going to look for the device and it's going to find that device. I've not really had a problem with it in the past. It will now understand a blink test or blink. Okay, so it's going to look for the devices. It might find them and I'll assign them. I'll see if it does. But I should be able to tell uh, the person that I'm not going to say because she'll go mad at the moment as she does it to then switch this on and switch this off and it will do exactly the same thing there. So we've got a really good microchip board, uh, microprocessor that can be programmed now online and sent over the air updates. You can come to your setup, detach this sketch and attach another sketch. That's stuff that, that, can, that can happen. We can connect dashboards that we have created ourselves on our phone. There we go, you can just see here. It's gonna be in my office. Add to group, press okay. And so this will be the moment of truth. Never do live tests. Alexa, turn on blink test. Hmm, I don't know that. <laughs> okay, I'll give her a second, because sometimes when you do do this, it takes a little second for that to update on the phone to there. So I will try that on in a second. Well, I'll, I'm impatient, I'll give it one more go. Alexa, turn on blink test. Sorry, I don't know that one. Yeah, well, because off there, I reckon if I press the button at the moment, this might do it. There you go, yep, yeah. and on, as I was doing there before, so it was on. Then if I switch it off, it should go off eventually. It's just taking a little second to update this over the cloud. There we go, so it's gone off. Will it send that message? Oh, who, see, who sees? I'll give it a second and do that, but it does work. I use it all the time. Now, why I use it all the time is, as quite a few of you know, uh, my kids got uh, wheelchairs and we've got a lift in the house, but they can't physically press the button. It's like an old person's lift and they have to keep the button pressed, which they can't do. So what we've done is I disassembled this stuff, literally just made two connections to the pins here uh, to pretend like it's pressed. So inside here is one of these devices looks a bit like this but with the pins here actually connected to the pins and when we looked at my dashboards before you will see I've got several dashboards all in end because they're just data monitoring tools for me as well there's the lift and all the kids have they've got a slightly different layout because she's got an iPhone my daughter is come on come on come on there up down and we can switch it on. Well, that's just an example I've not updated for later. They just have a mobile version. And I don't know why that actually is there anymore. It's not on my daughter's that. I think it's just the example. I'm going to delete that now. There we go. I used to have one that said all the way up and all the way down. So on her phone, she just has up down. And she can call that lift and pull that lift down from anywhere actually in the world if she really wanted to. Um, and I've got lots of different devices connected. So other tools that I uh, have and other uh, things that I can do. Uh, I don't know if I've got this plugged in. You can use other Arduino devices. I've got this Arduino device that actually scans like this and gives me a radar layout for robotics. We've got um, uh, humidity sensors and other sensors that I have. If I click here and come in, in fact, I'll slip this to screen and cam now. 
If I look at my other um, dashboards, for example, there's a humidity and temperature sensor. And it also goes to show you if you don't collect enough data, there's also some issues because what I have on this dashboard is, uh, if I go to the seven day look, I thought there was something wrong that was really hidden that. We can see here weirdly that every time the temperature goes up, the humidity actually goes down and it kind of swings and roundabouts and goes through. That actually told my roofer that the house is actually, the roof is actually quite well ventilated in, in that way. And this area here is actually when it was windy and it's blowing, almost blowing through the roof. So weirdly, this showed that the, the roof was in good order and lots of different things and lots of different tools that you can use uh, to do that. I've got loads of different dashboards for loads of different areas, but all of this requires very little effort because IoT cloud service is doing all of this. I've got uh, LoRaWAN battery testing, weather stations, the Wacker is something else we can talk about, which is the, if I just uh, scroll back to this, going through my device there that way so this is a distance sensor that i have here that the further you hold your hand away from this distance sensor this directly controls the servo and we've got enough parts to do that ourselves so one of the kind of applications of this that i'm playing with is as my kids get nearer at a door the door opens with them and then closes after them and so these are the different ideas that we can play around with with these tools. So effectively there, I said we're just ending there with this. Effectively here, um, we've got lots of different tools. C++ isn't the greatest in the world, whereas I go to this uh, tool to use. It can be a little bit annoying, but I think the IoT device that we have here now enables us to have lots of different things that are connected to lots of different devices, swap and change around, and start to play around with our code and drop stuff in. So I'm going to end, end with that one. It's a very whirlwind introduction to, um, uh, to C++. Hopefully you've seen that the actual syntax is just you know, the, the actual logic is the same. The syntax is just slightly different. Uh, so it's not really that hard to learn effectively. So I know I've talked a lot. Um, I don't know if there's any uh, questions. I know I forgot to upload the last one. I'm actually making a new website for us because I've just bought a new, um, that's my cable that I can pull up, a camera that I can pull away from now. Um, I've actually uh, got a completely different website just dedicated for us that I'm building. Um, for this so hopefully that'll be ready almost instantaneously with a history of everything and it just behind a bit of a, a login system so hopefully i'll have that finished this week uh, and i will drop those in but play around with these devices get them connected to your wi-fi um have a play if you can get the distance sensor working or just use the leds and get it connected to alexa or google or just the dashboard on the web browser as you saw me and that's you delving into the iot world of things much much more easily than python and any other microcontroller so i'll stop are there any questions other than the information overload that's there so do like i said go back and have a play with this so other than that anything <laughs> uh, people just kind of hi rory hi yeah how you doing <laughs> My little laser cutter. Yep. So um, we're, we're looking to actually in my office um, down in the academy, we're looking to actually do a whole whole suite of stuff. For the moment, we've got a filament uh, 3D printer at DJX. Uh, it's probably easier just to send me the code because I'm, I'm at DJX most uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, most mornings.
you know most prints take a couple of days or so take a, a good few hours over the day and I can just set something off and let you collect it whenever you want rather than take you through that process but yeah we do hope to actually build people into a maker space so the same with the laser cutter the laser cutter is dead easy so whenever I'm bespoke doing things as you were seeing there the reason I use a laser cutter is this laser cut thing took me four minutes to cut Whereas 3D printing that same thing would have taken about four hours and you can really uh, innovate with laser uh, cutting and it's actually quite cheap if you look online, really good stuff, just need a fairly decent ventilated area. But yes, you have access to a laser cutter easily through us and a 3D printer easily through us. We're about to get a CNC machine, uh, which is also uh, something that's quick devices. I don't really have many um, filament stuff anymore is this is something i use which is a resin uh, 3d printer now the resin printer can go under a direct sun it's got a little bit of give in there when i'm doing that the filament because it's designed to melt squeeze through a pipe and then go solid again anything over 25 degrees and it starts to melt slowly and warp out of shape so great for prototyping but it then comes to like resin printing and again you can access that through uh, through us or through me uh, when you get better at it but resin printing is full mask toxic chemicals uh, so yeah laser cutting and filament printing first but absolutely if you want to prototype with stuff uh, all about prototyping and the kits that we were talking about before you can just go on to um, Amazon and just do starter electronics kits. Um, they just, yeah, just play around with them. They're dead easy. Like I said, every device you need or everything you need is bespoke. Now, if ever you wanted to do a low powered thing that runs off battery, then you want to be dealing with the ESP8266 because the Arduino IoT is great for easily doing everything we saw tonight, but it doesn't have a low power mode. So you always need a constant power. Whereas this thing, you can set it to low power mode and get it to sleep and then just wake back to life and sleep and go back. So really important when you're using like LoRaWAN stuff, if you can set up, um, and I know, um, I think it was in the press. If it's not in the press, they're not hiding it. Um, Andy and Holmes are putting like 20,000 sensors um, using LoRaWAN and using low power modes because they don't want to go back in and change those sensors for five years. That's how how long you can keep sending data in small packets if you use these kind of different systems. So yeah, let's just get things working at first like I do with these little devices and then have them constantly into power and then start to work on those other stuff. But yes, prototyping, just let me know and we can have separate chats about those. Right, no worries. If there's nothing else, um, please feel free to speak. Uh, like I said, I will press stop on the record there and... Uh, just looking for the rest. There we go. It 